Good evening, and welcome to Kings Mountain Assembly and our normal Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, we're so happy to have you um, here and uh, online tonight, and we're, we're so thankful uh, for all of you that are even watching uh, this as a recording, uh, that it might bless your hearts and that it might uh, uh, start a fire of, uh, of studying the scriptures. Um, we do have some prayer requests being Wednesday night. We always want to uh, give a prayer request. We want to continue to pray uh, for our new facility. Uh, we're about 90% done, and, um, and we're praying that the Lord continues to, to build the church. Uh, also, we want to continue to remember, our, we have some prayer requests that we've mentioned over and over, but, um, and we don't do it in repetition, but we uh, do it uh, because they're close to our hearts. We want to con uh, uh, continue to pray for Allison and, and Sean and Miss Jean Robbins and, uh, and family. We want to continue to pray for uh, uh, Carmen de Jesus and her family as uh, they uh, uh, meet in New Jersey for a funeral for her brother. Uh, we also want to continue to remember Miss Margaret Myers, who's a very uh, near and dear to us. And we also want to, uh, we would like to, to receive uh, the prayers of, of the people um, they, and everybody that's paying attention to the broadcast tonight we ask that you pray for us and, and at the same time we'll be praying for you. Lord Jesus we thank you for bringing us together tonight we thank you uh, for your people uh, Lord we thank you for all the wonderful and rich blessings Lord that you, you and the things that you've done for each and every one of us Lord uh, whether we uh, know it or not, Lord Jesus, you do so many things behind the scenes, and we're so thankful for it tonight. Uh, we thank you for your anointing on our lives and your, and your, and your ever-present hand, Lord, that leads and guides us uh, by your Holy Spirit. Uh, Lord, we uh, remember those that uh, call upon the name of the Lord, wherever they might be tonight. Uh, we remember those of this, uh, of this church and, and this fellowship. Um, uh, that are still struggling with uh, different aches and pains in the body and sicknesses and disease. And, and we pray and, and we're so thankful for the progress that has been made, but we continue to remember them uh, for the continued plight and the continued journey. Uh, Lord, we ask that you keep your hand upon your people wherever they might be. Lord, lift them up today and strengthen them, Lord, um, the, that we not grow weary in well-doing. Uh, Lord, that we continue to preach the gospel to this world. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. And praise the Lord. And it's always uh, good to be in the house of the Lord. And it's always good to uh, have our minds and our hearts on the Lord. Uh, and, uh, it's a, uh, and it'll bring us uh, the mind that stayed on him uh, uh, in this book that uh, we're studying. And shall have perfect peace. Uh, and uh, we're so thankful for that. And um, here uh, in the book of Isaiah, and I wanted to... Um, go to Isaiah chapter 53 if you want to turn uh, to Isaiah chapter 53 as I was looking at the, the scriptures so many good scriptures about uh, the Messiah uh, here in uh, the book of Isaiah as well as other subjects um, uh, just, a, uh, just a recap of the, of the book here uh, in chapter 7 we went over Sunday about uh, that scripture about Emmanuel uh, God with us and in, in chapter 9 it talks about the government uh, of, of Christ uh, and, and, and it gives us some verses there and maybe we'll get into that in a little bit here uh, in chapter 11 it talks about him being the stem of Jesse uh, and the seven spirits of the Lord uh, that were upon him uh, and, and also in chapter, seven, uh, in chapter 7 we have a little uh, taste of the millennium there uh, and in so many uh, of Isaiah's prophecies of the millennium and, uh, and uh, that we might understand uh, this uh, next age uh, that is to come. Uh, in chapter 14, it talks about Lucifer, the uh, son of the morning there. Um, and we have to uh, uh, be mindful uh, of, of those that are adversaries to Christ. Uh, and, and then in uh, chapter 40, it starts to, the uh, book of Isaiah starts to make a turn. Uh, in, in chapter 40, it starts the last 27 chapters. Um, that, uh, uh, that many believe are connected with the New Testament scriptures and have the same spirit of the New Testament. Uh, in chapter 40 it says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Uh, and it starts to tell the prophecy of John the Baptist. Uh, and, uh, but uh, in chapter 53, I, I didn't uh, want to forsake, but spending a, 
a couple of uh, services on Isaiah the prophet here. Uh, I didn't want to forsake um, getting in Isaiah chapter 53 uh, because the description uh, of part of the Lord's life on earth in great detail uh, that we might understand. And, and many that uh, read this uh, chapter uh, in Israel before the coming of Christ and even today I'm sure uh, we're, we didn't understand uh, the totality of this scripture in Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, but uh, I pray that uh, maybe we can understand it just a little bit better when we uh, should leave this place uh, tonight uh, in, in these bodies in this life. So in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 1, uh, it says, Who has believed our report? And, and that might sound familiar to, to you because it's in two, a couple of verses in the New Testament. Uh, and, uh, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Uh, to whom has the arm of the Lord? And you know the arm of the Lord is his strength. Uh, the arm of the Lord is his great work in the earth, isn't it? Uh, so uh, we see in who, uh, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who uh, is this uh, Messiah revealed to? Who understands it? Um, who, who is his, uh, what is his name, the scripture says, uh, there? Uh, but in Isaiah chapter 53 and, and, and verse 1, we see this uh, repeated also uh, in John chapter 12. In uh, John chapter 12, it says, Out of that, uh, he had done many miracles, uh, many did not believe, they believed him not. Uh, and then it goes on to say in uh, verse 38 uh, that the saying of the prophet might be fulfilled as he spake to the Lord, Who believed our report? Who has believed our report? And, and, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Uh, you see there, Jesus quotes these uh, uh, same uh, verses here. Uh, and, and, and note, uh, don't read over it too. Uh, I know we went over that scripture a little bit Sunday, but that, in that scripture in chapter 12, uh, the next chapter in chapter 13 is a foot washing there right before the Last Supper. Uh, so you see that's one of the uh, 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 verses that he's quoting right before uh, the crucifixion there. Uh, so we want to... Uh, understand those things uh, more readily. Uh, we, want to, we want to put them in the context and, and see the importance of those things. And, uh, and as you look in Romans chapter 10 and, and, and verse 13, uh, it says, For the heart of man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Uh, but you see, who has believed? You see, if you believe uh, with, the heart, with the heart, man believeth. Under righteousness, it, it says, for if you can confess with your mouth, uh, it says a little bit, a few verses above that, and believe in your heart uh, there. Uh, we want to be believers. We have one job. Uh, we have to believe. Um, and I pray that your faith is strengthened every time that you come uh, to the household of faith, every time that you uh, agree with a brother or sister in the Lord. And, uh, and it also says in verse 16, uh, quoting this, it said, But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed? Who hath believed our report? Also in Romans 10, if you, uh, if you want to look back just a second in uh, chapter 52 and verse 7, uh, he quotes part of how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news and proclaims peace. Uh, you see there, uh, he, he's still quoting uh, Paul is uh, Isaiah. Uh, and, uh, and in verse 10, it says, The Lord has made uh, his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. He made his bear his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. Uh, but nobody believed it. Uh, nobody saw his holy arm. Nobody saw those things. He said, Who has uh, believed? Um, I, I pray today that uh, there was a righteous few that believed. And, and, and even today, there's still a remnant, uh, not only uh, of the Gentiles, but of the Jew also, uh, but that still believes. Uh, so we look here in chapter 53 in verse 2, and he said, For he shall grow up before him uh, as a tender plant, as a root out of the ground. Um, you, you know, when you look at this, it's a, it's a strange uh, scripture, isn't it? Uh, God, uh, uh, the Father, talking uh, hear about God the Son, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant uh, here. And both of the he and the him is capitalized. And as a root out of the ground, uh, out of the dry ground, uh, that Israel was a dry ground. Uh, there were many Pharisees and there were many people there that did not believe. 
And he said, uh, it said he has no uh, form or comeliness. There's no beauty in him here. Um, uh, you see, and, and there's uh, no beauty that we should desire him. And when we see him, there's no beauty that we shall desire him. But he shall grow up. Um, uh, you see, he shall grow up just like a, uh, any other physical person. He shall grow up. Um, how, how in the world? Um, and you see these other religions uh, of this world, they don't talk about God becoming a man. Uh, that uh, he might uh, sacrifice for us. Uh, it said before, uh, and before Christ came, many had probably wondered about the fulfillment of these verses. Who is this? You think about them not knowing the Christ. And he said, well, who is he talking about here? Who is Isaiah talking about? Uh, well, what's the spirit? And uh, you see how the spirit puts things in his mouth. And um, the more I read the scriptures of, of how the prophets and the Lord moved at, at sundry times, the scripture says, and, and spoke uh, to the prophets by the Holy Spirit. And, and, and it said that today he's spoken by his son. He's spoken by Jesus Christ. And that's all we need. Uh, but when I, I look at these things uh, that Isaiah said by the Spirit, uh, it's, 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 so, uh, uh, it's so amazing to me uh, that uh, he can describe these things in such detail uh, that were fulfilled in, in the man, in the God-man, Christ Jesus. And it, and it says here uh, in the Scripture, it uh, talks about this fulfillment. And in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, it's just two verses, but it's a lot of reading. It said, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. He grew up uh, as a child, um, and, and, and he had favor with God and with man. Uh, but the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be wonderful. His name shall be counselor. He's the mighty God, uh, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He's all of those things in the flesh. And you look here in, uh, in, in verse 7, it said, And of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order and to establish it with judgment and with justice. Uh, you, you see there uh, uh, that, that there's so many things to this. Um, uh, it's, it's hard uh, for mere men to understand that dry ground of Israel. Um, he, he came there in, in Matthew 13 and he, tell, he told a parable of the sower. Um, you know, and some was stony ground, some uh, was hard, it wouldn't grow. Uh, but he came up out of Israel uh, to save the world. And he came looking like an ordinary man. Um, uh, uh, not the, uh, the beautiful pictures that we see. Uh, we see these beautiful pictures of Christ. Uh, but we used to, everybody used to have one on the wall. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, I, I know I say things like that all the time, and I'm not down talking somebody to have a, a picture of what they think Christ looked like on their wall. Uh, uh, but it, he was uh, he came looking like an ordinary man in flesh, um, and there was no beauty uh, that we should desire him or no form of comeliness. Uh, he, he didn't uh, he didn't come here uh, waving a wand and, and and that sort of thing uh, like a wizard or something of the earth. Uh, but he came uh, as a man, uh, and he uh, bore our griefs here, it said uh, in verse 3, And he was despised and rejected by men, uh, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him, uh, some in shame, some in disgust, uh, hid uh, their faces. Uh, how could you look on him um, and, and, uh, after he had been beaten? How could you look on him? Uh, leading up to the crucifixion. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Um, you know, I'm, almost every time I read these scriptures, it's an emotional uh, uh, experience. Um, uh, to, to experience that Christ, the price that Christ, uh, that Christ paid, a man of sorrows here, uh, that rejected can also mean forsaken. Those sorrows can also mean pain. The grief can also mean sickness in, in the Hebrew there. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14, uh, it goes on saying, Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Uh, but you see, all these scriptures and all these offices, you know, he, he, uh, you see, he's a great high priest and he took up an office that nobody else could. Uh, he did things that nobody else could. Uh, he uh, uh, established things that nobody else could establish. That is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, and, 
In verse 14 of Hebrews chapter 4, let us hold fast our pr profession. Uh, let us not ever uh, uh, shrink back or uh, turn back uh, from the things of God. Uh, but in verse 15 it goes on. It said, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He, he could be touched even today with the feeling of our infirmities. We are not alone. Uh, we have a friend in Jesus. Uh, but we're not by ourselves uh, because he came down in the flesh uh, to show us how it could be done. Uh, and it said, but was in all points tempted like as we are. And I'm glad there's a comma there and not a period. Yet without sin. Uh, you see, he did it without sin. Uh, but you see, uh, we, we strive to live above sin. Uh, but we uh, strive to live against uh, the reproach of sin. Uh, but he did it. He accomplished that thing uh, that uh, we struggle to accomplish. Uh, you see, and, uh, that uh, he goes on to say in verse 16 in Hebrews, uh, he said that we can go boldly before the throne of grace. Um, uh, you see, we can repent. We can go there. Uh, but you see, because he did it without sin, but, but, but we uh, often fail at that. Uh, but we can find grace. In verse 16, it said we can find grace in the time of need. Uh, when we feel like we can't make it and we can't do it, uh, we know that Christ has done it for us. Uh, and we can find grace in the time of need. Um, and as you uh, continue to look at these scriptures here, it says in verse 5, uh, it said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. And, and I'm going to read through this. Normally we don't, we try not to read word uh, verse by verse, but uh, uh, this is a, a beautiful uh, passage that the Spirit has given to us. And he said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And we like to quote this when we we're praying for the sick. Uh, he said, by his stripes we are healed, and all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him. You see, we've turned everyone to his own, and the Lord has laid on him. Uh, he's laid on him uh, of the iniquity of us all. Um, I pray that uh, uh, we as Christians do not crucify the Lord afresh. And in verse 7, he is oppressed and was a, he was afflicted. And yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And his sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. And he was taken from prison and from judgment. Uh, and who would declare his generation? I pray uh, that uh, King's Mountain Assembly, as long as it's here. Uh, I know the things of earth don't last forever. Uh, but the word of the Lord will. It'll last forever. And Isaiah tells it over and over again. Jesus tells it. Uh, over and over. And he said, For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken. Uh, for the transgressions of the people, he was stricken. Uh, these are some of the reasons and some of the accomplishments that only Christ could, uh, could accomplish. Uh, in, I, in Isaiah 61 and verse 1, uh, it goes on to say, in Isaiah uh, chapter 61 and verse 1, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I mean, and he quotes these things in Luke uh, chapter 4 there, uh, but he doesn't quote this uh, second part of chapter, uh, verse 2 of chapter 61. And the day of vengeance of our God. And the day of vengeance of our God. I um, mean, you see, and we're reading here in chapter 53 about his crucifixion and what he accomplished and, and what he paid for for us in chapter 61. He paid for the comfort to those that mourn. He paid for it on the cross. He paid for those things uh, with his precious blood. Uh, but he's not coming back like that again. Jesus didn't quote that part uh, when he quotes this verse these verses in, in Luke chapter uh, uh, 4. Uh, the day of vengeance is coming. And that and in verse 2 of chapter six, one, 61 uh, is a period of 2,000 years. Uh, and he's saying that the and 2,000 years then the day of vengeance. The day of vengeance of our God. 
uh, so we're, uh, uh, we uh, want to see uh, the Lord come again, uh, but he's not going to come to be crucified. You know, he's not coming. Uh, and, you know, we always say uh, uh, they're about the lion and the lamb. And in chapter 11 of Isaiah, it says the wolf and the lamb. You know, the lion and the lamb don't lay down together there in that scripture. Uh, you see, because he came as a lamb the first time, um, and, and we'll get into that in just a second, uh, he came as a lamb, but the next time he's coming like a lion. Uh, you see, he's coming as a lion of the tribe of Judah. He, he's not going to be uh, 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 subject to this anymore. He's not going to be subject. He's, he is our champion. Um, and you see, and, uh, we didn't reckon, uh, many didn't recognize it when he was on the cross. But we ought to recognize it now that he's our champion, uh, that he brought forth a victory in the finished work of a cross. So we look here in verse 7 of chapter 53, and he, and, and he uh, here, uh, in, well, in verse 9, I'm sorry, in verse 9 of chapter 53, and they made his grave with the wicked. Uh, you see, they made, they made his grave with the wicked, just like a wicked man dies. They, uh, he died, uh, and, and he was buried. But with the rich at his death, he was, he was buried like a rich man. Why? Uh, because he was born in the tomb of a rich man. Uh, and uh, he was born, he was uh, he was buried in the tomb of a rich man because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. And then there was a a, a man, a righteous man there that by the name of Joseph of Arimathea in chapter 27 uh, of the book of Matthew, and he, and he uh, was a secret disciple. Uh, he himself, Joseph, was a secret disciple of Jesus. In verse 57 and in, in, in verse 58. Uh, he, named, he was named Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man, and also himself was Jesus' disciple, but in secret, for fear of the Jews there, uh, and he went to, uh, to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And then Pilate commanded the body uh, to be de delivered to him. And it goes on to say in Matthew chapter 27, uh, in, in verse 59, in Matthew chapter 27, verse 59, and when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in clean linen. Uh, and he wasn't alone. See, uh, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, the one that came to him by night in John chapter 3. Uh, these two rich men, uh, these, uh, these two rich men that were secret disciples of Jesus Christ himself. Um, and you see, they sat on the Sanhedrin. Uh, uh, the Nicodemus was called the teacher of Israel. He said, you being the teacher, you don't understand these things? Uh, and then Joseph of Arimathea, these are rich men, and they wrap him, uh, and, and then they uh, buy pounds and pounds of spices for his body. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, he got up anyway on the third day. But in verse 60 it said, and uh, Joseph laid him in his own new tomb. Uh, and you know, a lot of us uh, uh, will prepare, and I know people that have bought burial plots, and uh, people have uh, bought, bought sepulchers ahead of time. Uh, but uh, it was his new tomb which he had hewn out in the rock. And then he gave that to Christ. And the great stone of the door of the sepulcher. And they departed. <laughs> and, and we're so glad that the women came. Uh, and it, uh, when they came that, uh, uh, that next uh, uh, Sunday that he had gotten up. Uh, you see he had gotten up. But he was uh, there accounted with the wicked. Uh, but he was buried with the rich. And, and you see that this prophecy here in Isaiah is fulfilled in verse 9. Uh, so you see in verse 10, it goes on to say, in verse 10, you see this pleased the Lord. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Uh, but you see, um, and, and we wonder about uh, this language. We don't understand these things. How great is our God? Uh, but you know, when I don't understand something, I say, how great is our God? And he said... He's, he's beautiful for situations. Yeah. Um, uh, he, he can uh, explain things that, that it boggles our minds. Yes. And he said it pleased uh, the Lord to bruise him. He has put uh, him to grief. And when you make his soul an offering for sin, uh, and make his soul an offering for sin, uh, and, and there's another verse there in Hebrews that, that stirs my soul in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. He said, looking, he said that we're under such a great cloud of witnesses there after chapter 11 with a great hall of faith there and they're all there he said looking unto Jesus all these people that sacrifice 
And we know the prophet Isaiah, that, that they had said that, uh, that, that, that in the, the Jews, the rabbis say that he was sawn in two by Manasseh uh, by there, uh, who might have been his grandson. And he sawed him in two for these prophecies. Um, uh, there was uh, uh, prophets at the time of Jeremiah that were killed. And, and, and Jeremiah would have been killed also, but there were those that hid him. And it said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Uh, but you see, we, well, we uh, as men and women, uh, we look at things like that and we say, oh, uh, but we look at death and oh, and, uh, and we cry and, and we hurt. And it said, who for the joy? That was set before him. And he said, uh, one time he said, this is the reason I was born. Uh, you see, this is the reason I, I came to this earth to die. He said, I, he said, I came uh, uh, to die here. And the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And despising the shame, and it sat down. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, and you see, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, uh, but you but you see later, uh, there was a man uh, by the name of Stephen in chapter 7 uh, of the book of Acts. And, and, and they stoned him. And he had sat down. Why did he sit down at the right hand of the Father? Because uh, that's, that language is saying that he had finished his work. Yes. He had done it all. He had accomplished. Uh, he had conquered sin. Uh, but he stood up there uh, for Stephen there in, in Acts chapter 7. And uh, Stephen looked up. Uh, just like a, there was a prophet that looked up, uh, Isaiah looked up and saw the throne of the Lord. Micaiah looked up in the time of Ahab and saw the throne of the Lord. Paul looked up and he, and he said, whether in the body or out of the body. John looked up and he said, I was taken to the Lord's day. Uh, Ezekiel said he saw the, the beings there in Ezekiel chapter 1. And, uh, and we're, we want to look unto Jesus. And in verse 3 of Hebrews... Uh, of chapter 12, it said, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Consider uh, the Lord uh, every time you feel like giving up, every time you feel like you can't go anymore, every time that you start, uh, your faith is weak. Um, uh, we know that the flesh is weak, uh, but, but the spirit uh, is always willing. Um, you see, and, and every time we feel that way, consider him. Yeah. Consider Jesus, mm -hmm. who endured such a contradiction of sinners against himself. Yeah. Uh, consider Jesus and, and, and the price that he paid. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, uh, and then that uh, the scripture said, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. Who is his seed? Um, uh, we got his seed sitting all over the house tonight. We got his seed watching tonight. We got his seed. Uh, calling on the name of the Lord wherever they might be. Yes. Um, in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26, it said, We are all children of God by faith in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and his finished work on the cross. On the cross. That he lived, he died, he was buried. Uh, and and, and I, I thank the Lord that he rose again. Uh, that he rose again. And you see, and that's the essence of the gospel. Uh, that's the essence of it. And it's the power of everyone that believes uh, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Uh, so we look here and we see that it pleased the Lord. And his seed, uh, has, uh, and he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And, and here he said, he shall see the labor of his soul. And be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant uh, shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Um, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, that the rabbis, I'm sure that those that follow the Talmud, I'm sure that those of Israel, the Pharisee, the Sadducee, the Herodians, um, uh, there, the scribes, uh, uh, the, the zealots, I'm sure they read these things and they said, Who is this? Who is this? Uh, they didn't know who he was. Um, it, it was like so many heroes of, of, of the fables of the past. They, were, they wore masks. You didn't know who they were. Uh, you see, and, and he came uh, in the flesh and nobody knew who he was. Uh, he said, but unless you believe that I am, unless you believe that I am in John chapter 8, you will die. 
you will die in your sins yeah. unless you believe that I am um, here. And, and you look here in, in verse 12 of chapter 53. In verse 12 of uh, chapter 53, the Lord bore our sin. He bore our sin. Uh, you look here, and, and, and he did what nobody else could do. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil uh, with the uh, strong. Uh, you, you know, it says in, uh, in the book of Romans there that we are, we are uh, there, we, that uh, we are uh, adopted with the spirit of adoption. Uh, into the family, aren't we? And, and, and we're right there with Christ. Let me get this scripture. Um, it's coming to me now in Romans uh, uh, chapter 8. Uh, that he, he, brought us, uh, he brought us here. Uh, and uh, that we might, uh, that we might uh, have, that we might be the sons of, of God. He said, for as many as are led in verse 14 of chapter 8. Uh, by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. I mean, you know, some people in the world, they live their Christian life in fear. Uh, you see, he didn't, uh, uh, he didn't save us that we might live in fear. Uh, we didn't receive a spirit of bondage again to fear. Uh, do not fear, uh, the most frequent command in the scriptures. But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children. We are children of God. Yeah. And if we, if it's children, then heirs, heirs of God. And we're joint heirs with Christ. And if he indeed we suffer with him, uh, that we may also be glorified together. Um, you see, we are joint heirs with Christ. Yeah. And he said, therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. You, know, you see, we're going to be joint heirs with him. He's going to divide a portion uh, with the strong because he has poured out his soul unto death. That's all, this inheritance is already paid for. He bore our sin. It's already paid for. He was numbered with the transgressors. Uh, they, they numbered him. He who knew no sin became sin. He was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many. He bore the sin of many. I, I'm, I'm glad I'm part of that many. Uh, and made intercession. And all we have to do is accept it. All we have to do is believe. You know, you know the Lord did uh, the work that nobody else could do. He, he alone was perfect. He, he alone was without sin. Uh, he alone was that spotless lamb. Uh, he alone uh, could, could have made that sacrifice to end all sacrifices. He alone could have done that. Uh, but and, and there's coming a time in Isaiah chapter 63 and 3. Uh, I wanted to give an overview of this, uh, the prophecies of this uh, great prophet here that the Lord had put his hands upon. And he said, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. And, the, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. Uh, you see, the Lord uh, did, he had to tread the wine press alone. Yes. He was the only one. Jesus. He was the only one that could have done these things. He was the only one that could accomplish these things. He was the only one. Uh, but it's, it's amazing the work that the Lord has done. Uh, but you see, he ever, he ever uh, uh, he said that, that you'll reap where you did not sow. Yes. Um, uh, you know, have you ever reaped anything in the earth where you did not sow? Um, and you know, you reap things every day in your life that somebody else paid for. Um, uh, you, you reap things that uh, men um, in this country of freedom that men paid the ultimate price on the battlefield for. You reap things in your family of, of mothers and fathers and grandmothers that made sacrifices for you that you never, uh, that, that you never had to do and you reap the benefits of that. Uh, but uh, most of all, we reap the benefits. Yes. Of what Christ did yes. on the cross. And, then, and we come behind and all we have to do is believe. All we have to do is believe. I mean, do you believe tonight? Yes. Do you believe tonight? Yes. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you uh, for bringing us together. We thank you for showing us a portion of your word, Lord. We thank you uh, for the hand of your spirit, oh Lord, not only upon us tonight, Lord Jesus, but 
upon Isaiah so that we might have these words uh, uh, not uh, only for uh, today but uh, uh, before our time and after those that will call upon these words that you put in the mouth of Isaiah and put on his pen that he might be able to write these things that we have them uh, as evidence for ourselves to increase our faith. Lord, I pray that it increase the faith of somebody tonight, Lord Jesus, uh, that has yet to call upon you as Lord, uh, that they might be able to see that you are the Son of God that came to sacrifice uh, for mankind. In your name, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.